So one of my favorite games that's out there is called Trackmania. It's actually it's one of my favorite video game series next to like Need for Speed and stuff like that and the Nitto 1320 games. Trackmania is a game I've been playing for almost 20 years. I first bought Trackmania from my Scholastic Book Fair uh, when I was in third or fourth grade from my private school. It was Trackmania Sunrise. Loved the game, played it for hours and hours and hours. I still play it to this day. It's a fantastic game. If you want a version of it that you can play on Windows 10 or Windows 11, you can get it off of my archive.org post where it finally is completely Star Force removed, which was the anti-cheat they used. And for a long time, it did not work on newer than Windows XP computers because of Star Force. That's beside the point, though. But I'm so glad that I can play it again. Trackmania United came out, Trackmania Nations came out, both games, fantastic, they were the sequels to um, Trackmania Sunrise, Trackmania Nations was the introduction of the stadium vehicle, Trackmania United kind of brought all the environments into one game, now we have Trackmania 2, Trackmania Turbo, and Trackmania 2020 being the newest game they've released. There is a lot of drama in the community, kind of right now, amongst what is and isn't considered exploitive as far as a third-party tool getting used to play the game. And I feel really strongly on this subject because of my history with video games and cheating and creating cheats and using third-party software. I feel like I definitely have a leg up to stand on when at least talking about something like this because I just have experience. When the big fiasco came up with Riolu and a whole bunch of other Trackmania players using Cheat Engine to slow down the game so their inputs would be more accurate, that was actually something I knew about since almost day one of Trackmania because I had done it in Trackmania Sunrise to just practice routes and truly understand parts of a track so I could see how close to an edge I could get. Almost kind of like a tool-assisted speedrun sort of thing, but I wasn't using like save states, reloading from checkpoints, things like that. I was just starting a race, getting to a point, hitting a... Uh, hitting a uh, hot key on my keyboard to enable half speed in the game with cheat engine speed hack and then go from there people had been using cheat engine speed hack to slow down trackmania 2020 and trackmania nations to get world records so that was something i knew about very early on in trackmania was going on but i was just never able to really bring it to light because i'm a small content creator i'm a small gamer Nobody knows who I am, and if I had even, maybe if I would have tagged people on Twitter and that were big in the community, like Virtual or some other players. I was a fan of Riolu. If I, I would have tagged him on Twitter, who knows what could have happened. That would have been weird. But I wouldn't have known specific players who were doing it. It wasn't, players weren't caught using Cheat Engine to slow down their games until... Open Planet was really a thing, and you could watch players' input in game with a little on screen uh, thingy. Planet Track Mania. Open Planet Dev. Yeah. So, with Open Planet, there's a lot of things you can do. You can, like, see author times, you can see keyboard inputs, and using this dashboard sort of thing to see these keyboard inputs is how people got caught. Because what would happen is this basically it goes by a percentage and this is where today's conversation with the twit longer comes in if this isn't lit up pink at all it's zero percent pressed if it's lit up completely pink it's a hundred percent pressed well people were realizing these would blink if people use cheat engine to um, slow down their games and get a world record and drive the track. It would blink like crazy because the key presses, it was getting double the key presses per second, basically, if they were running at half speed of the game. So once they realized that they could detect cheaters with that, 
a whole bunch of people got the boot from leaderboards and a whole bunch of those people stopped playing Trackmania. I don't think Riolu's YouTube channel is even a thing anymore. So that's a great example of a terrible third-party tool for this game. But what's the gray area of third-party tools? Because as peripherals and games get more advanced and people find out what's good or bad to use in a game to give themselves kind of a competitive edge, where do the developers draw the line? And that's where this twit longer comes in. So we're going to read it, and I'm going to kind of give my thoughts as we go along. Keep in mind, I'll be, I'm not even trying to use it as an excuse. I'm ADHD, autistic, and like slightly dyslexic. Also, you can hear my stutter once in a while, and I kind of have to take a break from my brain to catch up to my mouth because I talk faster than I sometimes think. So I'm sorry if this is a little bumpy. But, anyway, let's go. Message to the community on custom steering keys. Custom steering keys, for those that don't know, they're called action keys. They are explained in this write-up, so I'm not really going to explain them now. Message to the players from the team of Ubisoft Nadia. There have been discussions lately about analog inputs and the use of peripheral calibration software and many questions on what is allowed or is not allowed. As you may imagine, this is a very complex issue that requires time to conclude since developments may have to be involved. Okay, understandable. A key philosophy for us has always been to try and stabilize the training of players opposed to some games that regularly change gameplay and have a more dynamic meta. When players settle on learning how to play with a keyboard or controller, some people also play with a steering wheel and pedals, it really means something to us and we always aspire to keep our training valuable. Sometimes that means making small adjustments to further close the gap in performance between different input devices like the keyboard, controller, or steering wheel. We introduced action keys since we were unable to offer a near-perfect match between peripherals on new gameplay dynamics in the given dev time. These provided our top keyboard players with ways to stay competitive on their preferred peripherals while also allowing us to introduce new gameplay elements more easily. We subsequently reduced the amount of action keys from 10 to 5, to make them more accessible and have less keybinds to consider. Okay, they aren't as explained as I remembered. So for those who have never played Trackmania, an action key on a keyboard, obviously, WASD or arrow keys, you can use either or to play the game in this case. I was a keyboard player of Trackmania since 2007, 2006 when I got Sunrise. I started playing on controller last week, and I will tell you, getting started on controller is way easier. But I do still think keyboard is easier in the long run because of the action keys that are included in the game. Action keys, basically, if you press your key, it's like I said before, if you press your key, it's either 100% pressed or 0% pressed. There's not like pressure sensitive keys on 99.5% of keyboards out there that gamers are using. There are pressure-sensitive keyboards out there. In a competitive nature game where you're having to do things at high speed, pressure-sensitive keys, not really going to work. So that's where the action keys came in. So if you press your left steering key, that's always 100% steering lock or not. People would get around it by tapping, basically. So you would hear for people in some sort of rhythm to do like speed sliding or just for turning more gradually. Makes sense. Well, action keys gave you the ability to set hotkeys. Let's say I have my left hand also on the keyboard. I play normally with arrow keys, but I have my left hand on the keyboard on WASD, and I set A and D as my action keys. These action keys could be set so it would be something like steering at 35% um, steering wheel lock instead of 100% steering wheel lock. Or same with D, it would be turning right at 35% lock instead of 100% lock. So you could set these keys 
to do certain things. And there were other certain things that action keys can do too that would help you specifically on what's called bobsled and water and ice. So those three track types. There are like six or seven track types now. There's there's magnet, there's ice, there's bobsled, there's sausage, there's regular track, there's platform, there's grass, and there's plastic. Seven or eight. Eight, I think. So that's basically explaining what action keys are and how they 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 definitely help in some scenarios on really a ton on bobsled they help and a ton on ice but people have kind of gotten around it on ice based maps because they figured out kind of what the perfect angle is for sliding your car almost you know deja vu tokyo drift um if you hold the key a specific way or you get your car in a specific angle and then just hold it full lock it'll just slide and still gain speed but that's you know that's a story for another day when we start tutorials on how to play Trackmania well. <laughs> and I don't think those videos are coming from me. Um, anyway, let's continue. Seeing the controversy about these action keys, instead of looking at ways players try and maximize their advantage, it rather pushes us to revisit, for instance, ice bobsleigh gameplay. Ice and bobsled go kind of hand in hand. Ideally, to reach a situation where these methods would be marginal for top performance. There's a huge difference between keyboard and controller. It's a lot easier to hold a speed slide on a controller than it is to hold a speed slide on a keyboard. But likewise, it's also a lot easier to hold specific steering angles on bobsled compared to holding the steering angle on a keyboard. So that's where that kind of comes from. We are also actively looking to revisit the development of some gameplay mechanics in aspiration to further reduce the effectiveness of both action keys and custom steering values. Like I was saying, the 35% instead of 100% steering lock. It will take time and resources to evaluate what is possible here, and we have already identified specific issues on bobsled. However, if we simply fix what we have identified, it would slow down the speed which means unbeatable records on a number of tracks. Totally makes sense. If they change it how they think it's going to change and it makes things easier for keyboard players to be competitive with controller players, it could also mean that the cars are slower for some reason on the surface, thus making world records unbeatable. And Trackmania doesn't really have control over the leaderboards. Like, yeah, they keep leaderboards, but the main place that actually keeps all the racetrack leaderboard files, if you want to upload your replay somewhere, is um, Mania Exchange. And it's a third-party website, kind of like a Speed Demo Archive or something like that, for records on racetracks and players to share their racetracks. But anyway, let's continue. Working on a faster bobsleigh without changing all ice surfaces is also very complicated, so this is why all in all the topic requires time and patience from everybody makes sense if they also make it faster that's just going to shatter old records but i guess people would rather have it have the ability to slightly beat records than not beat records i can see where the argument is there when and if we make changes that may affect gameplay we will try our best to do this when a season change occurs to preserve records and leaderboards the best we can our hope and ambition is to make different input devices close enough without requiring analog single action keys and to eventually maybe even remove action keys entirely. I think that'll be a bad idea, but some people also on controller have gotten caught cutting notches at certain angles so the it'll literally stay there. <laughs> but that's a subject for maybe later in this video or another time so what they mean for those who don't play the game what they mean by a season change is trackmania goes in seasons with their campaign mode every season so spring summer fall winter or autumn for you weird people um there are new campaign racetracks so if they change something in the game or they add new parts and pieces for racetracks for example, they added shallow water for this summer. 
uh, shallow water blocks or deep water blocks, I believe were added this summer for racetracks um, in specific shapes that actually match like um, road pieces rather than just like, oh, hey, you can put a box on the ground full of water um, like you could in Sunrise or United. They actually added track pieces that were shapes of water. So if they want to change anything about a surface, they want to do it during a season change. So let's continue. Wow, this is really long. I forgot. Until then, we believe that players' transparency about what they use in various situations is important and incredibly helpful. Constructive feedback is and always will be a key component to this process. If controller players become unfairly disadvantaged like keyboard players historically have been without action keys in a very clear way, we will look at all the disparities and find ways to address it with care. So people were using third-party tools like DX Tweak or software that comes with their keyboards, specifically wooding keyboards, where you could set steering, custom steering values like they talked about at the top of this article. People were using those custom steering values to get insane records on racetracks. A wooting keyboard player um, named uh, Virtual, I believe that's the keyboard he uses. Uh, I think he's talked about it before. Um, there was a race competition he did recently where if you beat an author time on a racetrack, you basically won $1,000. If you had proof, you did it. With the, act, the custom steering keys, he was able to get something like a... 44.5 without custom steering keys he got something like a 44.6 and with a controller he got a 44.4 second time on the track so there's definitely advantage with those action keys and with custom steering value keys custom steering value keys i don't believe are possible to do in the game settings as it's coded so my idea somebody said why don't they just include the sdk of wooden keyboards directly in the game well the problem with that is that forces people to buy a specific brand keyboard but what if they like the keyboard they have if you're like me i have this badass rgb keyboard from amazon that i bought through my work that my boss only paid a dollar for i paid two dollars for it he made a hundred percent profit i love this controller or this keyboard i don't want to trade it because if i want to be competitive in a game i specifically have to i have to buy a specific keyboard so my idea was, why don't they just mimic what those wooden keyboards can do and add custom steering values to the settings that you can set, do more advanced action keys instead. So, what, it's a big gray area. So, let's continue. While we do have a code of conduct that prohibits players from using external tools to gain unfair advantage, we do not currently consider peripheral software, like the Wooting keyboard software, which can be used to calibrate or enhance your device to be an external tool. We consider it an extension and therefore part of your peripheral of choice. However, when this software is used to drastically trivialize the mechanics of Trackmania that requires skill to execute, such as creating a custom steering value, we believe this gives unfair advantage we do not endorse. I agree with that. I don't think you should be allowed to use the macro settings on your keyboard or custom steering values with like custom key press percentages. That just feels like you're defeating the purpose of Trackmania and you need to get good. Coming from somebody who sucks at getting author medals, that's kind of ironic. Using a personal custom key to lock your steering automatically at an optimized angle is unfairly advantageous when consistency is valued as a skill and therefore will be considered unwanted and disallowed until further notice. Thank you. A key element to take into account and consider from our side is the question of if we can detect unwanted behavior. In that respect, we believe that no one is really looking forward to a never-ending battle of hide-and-seek on these subjects. Nadio. For the love of God, add an anti-cheat. Not do an OVO or whatever it's called, but add some form of an anti-cheat. If I open Cheat Engine, your game should crash. If I open Process Hacker, your game should crash. If I open IDA Pro or Ghidra and try to attach something to the process of Trackmania, the game should crash. There should be no reason 
that I can open those tools and play Trackmania. None at all. So, anyway, let's continue. Uh, wait, I lost where I was. Oh, a key element to take into account and consider from our side is the question of if we can detect... Oh, yeah. If we can detect unwanted behaviors, in that respect, we believe that no one is really looking for the never-ending battle. We const what constitutes unfair advantage and identifying use of this method for now will remain at the discretion of our judgment of our moderation team. We will not sanction players or records for this retroactivity as we agree that this was this has been a very difficult topic without clear ruling before. Players who may have used this method before this article are not considered to have been cheating, but this article does serve as a warning going forward. I can agree with that. On a side note, all this could be connected with anti-cheat systems and constraints that prevent us from disclosing everything. We have been working for the past months on significant big steps on our anti-cheat. What anti-cheat? There's none there. If I open Cheat Engine, make your game crash. And give me a warning in the game or something. Jesus Christ. There is no anti-cheat on Trackmania. None whatsoever. The community has made a better anti-cheat through Open Planet. Yeah. Seriously. As we see Trackmania as the racing game, we always aspire to have an equal playing field for all our players. We have managed to create an environment thus far in which different input devices perform almost similarly, and we take pride in this. We will continue to try and further close the gap where they exist. We ask our players to remain respectful towards each other when discussing these topics. The regulations surrounding these specific issues did not yet exist before today, and we are appreciative of having brought this to our attention in pursuit of integrity of our competitive environment and leaderboards. Do not hesitate to contact us in case of any questions, and please use the proper channels for reports of unwanted behavior. Thank you for your patience and understanding, and see you at the tracks, the team at Ubisoft Natio. Overall, a very great statement. Obviously, I'm happy they're not going to sanction players or temporarily ban players for stuff they did in the past that there weren't rules for. There's a lot of games out there that would just be like, okay, you were doing this two years ago? Here's a ban hammer. We changed the rules. Here's a ban hammer. So stupid. But at the same time, they still don't make it quite clear on what they're going to do really in the future. And anti-cheat software, yeah, it can do so much but as long as somebody is at home players have gotten in trouble at major tournament events to the point that tournament organizers provide keyboard and mice for the players they've gotten in trouble for using custom firmware on their mice or something like that so they could gain advantage i don't think trackmania is ever going to get to that point but I would at least like them to just give a concrete yes or no eventually on if these extensions of your peripherals can be used or not. I would like to see a firm yes or no. I think they should not be allowed. I think they are considered third-party software. It's giving people an advantage above people who otherwise don't have keyboards that can do this at all. DX Tweak kind of allows you to do it. But this subject is about the difference between keyboard and um, controller. So I'm torn on it, but at the same time, it's up to their discretion. I'm still going to play the game regardless. And if they eventually just say no to the software, I will be much happier. If they implement something into the game... I'll be much happier if they just implement it and make it part of the game so everybody can do it regardless of their keyboard or controller. But with that, I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out.